Fiery horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a hearty high old silver, the Lone Ranger. With his faithful Indian companion, Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoof beats of the great horse, Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, big fellow. I'm Silver. Bill Jones was known in several communities as Oyster Bill. When he extended his territory and drove his little wagon into the cattle country, he found an exceptionally favorable market. Canned oysters, he learned, were a rare delicacy, and people clamored to buy his wares. Business had been brisk in the town of Pine Knob, and Oyster Bill carried a sizable amount of cash when he drove west from the community. He sang lustily as he rode along. Don't you cry for me. I'm off to Louisiana with my banjo on my knee. When his song was ended, he heard approaching hoofbeats. Oh, oh, there. It uh, takes real selling to make him start running after you. <laughs> Let me see now. Oh, mask man. Get up there. There's a horse fellow. Ah, he's a horse. Oh, there. Oh, horse over. Oh, oh. Now, 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 don't shoot, mister. I'll give you my cash. I'm not after your money. Are you the man they call Oyster Bill? Well, then this ain't a hold up? No, I'm not an outlaw. Well, I asked you a question. Well, if this don't beat all... Even the owl hoots are after my oysters. I'm your man, friend. Oyster Bill, the purveyor of the most salubrious chunks of salt water eating you ever sunk an eye tooth in there. Uh, and it don't matter where your money come from, it's good with me. I don't want to buy your oysters. I followed you here to stop you from selling them. It, stop me? Why? The oysters you sold the people at Twin Falls were bad. Almost half the town was taken ill from eating them. Well, you can't blame that on me. I didn't at first. That is so easy, big fella. Then when I found out that all the oysters you sold were spoiled, I came after you. Well, I... Uh, now, look, there's no need to have any hard feelings, mister. If some friends of yours don't feel so well, I'll make it good for them. Give you a little extra for yourself, just so you don't spread the word around. You mean you'd continue to sell those oysters? 
Even though you know they're bad? Well, now, I knew they weren't top quality when I bought them. Not at the price I paid. But, uh, heck, they can't all be bad. You don't look like a murderer. Murderer? Me? I should say not. I wouldn't kill anybody. Back at Twin Falls, three men would have died if the doctor hadn't gotten there in time. Oh, go on. I didn't know people would get that sick. Then you knew they might become ill? Well, I... You knew those oysters were likely to be spoiled. I kind of suspicioned something was wrong with them. But I never figured on killing. That's going too far. Did you sell many in Pine Knob? Well, about a dozen cases. And those people must be warned. Do you have their names? Yeah. See, I better go back and talk to them. We'll go with you. Don't you worry about my sneaking out on this now, mister. I've flim-flammed people from St. Joe to the Pecos, sold them snake oil, rainmakers, and oh, plenty more. But, well, maybe they got stuck. But nothing I ever did cause folks to die. I don't aim to start now. Oh, wait a minute. What's the matter? I just remembered. A box of oysters for the Lazy Bee outfit should be coming in on this afternoon stage. Jack Gurney out there is planning a big blowout. Then we'll have to intercept that cargo. The stage is to swing around to the ranch and drop it off before it goes to Pine Knob. Do there about half an hour. Mm, that bad. Lazy B Ranch, hour ride right from here. Bill, you get back to Pine Knob. Hot and I'll ride cross country and try to stop the stage before it gets to the Lazy Bee. You can depend on me. I'm going to. But remember this. If you try any tricks... I'll track you down no matter where you go. Don't you worry now. I'll take care of my end. Get up there. Come on, Come on. Come on. While a suddenly sobered salesman speeded back toward Pine Knob, the Lone Ranger and Tonto set off to catch the stage before it reached the Lazy Bee. Aboard the big butter field, the guard and driver had no hint of what was to come. Get up there! We're gonna be late enough with this extra driving without you lazying around. Get on! Sure wish we could stop over for a while at the Lazy Bee and get in on that shindig they're having. Few them oysters would taste mighty good. They sure would. My missus can't see spending a lot of money just for something special to eat. Yeah, maybe we can figure out some reason for stopping on the next run. Get on there! can't afford to be wasting time now with all that money to be delivered to the bank. Yeah, funny thing. Them packing so much cash in a plain wood box. That's only on the outside. It's lined with metal. What's that? Up the stage. Stage robbers. They're coming up behind us. I'll get them. Ooh, pull up there. Pull up, Tom. We can't do nothing now. He smashed my shot. Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, 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 I must have a box you're carrying. There'll be no gunplay unless you ask for it. Not me, mister. Not after that one sample of your shooting. Watch him, Tonto. I'll climb up and get it. Ah, you do it. Beats me how you fellas find out these things. Just learned about it a few minutes ago. I'd have sworn nobody knew about that box of money except the marshal, the bank, and us. There. Our pulling's off. Did you say money? Eh, don't act like you didn't know. You don't hold up a stage for a box of oysters. That's right. Two boxes do look a little alike. Akima Sabi, me hear many horses. Yes, I see them. They're coming fast. <laughs> Looks like you came at the wrong time, mister. If that's some of the boys from the Lazy Bee, you better start buying. There's too many riders for that. I recognize that lead horse. Buck Soller and his gang. Must be after the money. And what we do? There's too many of them for us to fight. Unhitch two of the horses so these men can get away. Do it quickly. Let me do it. You mean you're letting us get away? No time for talk now. Help get far for you. Sure, but... Get uh, moving, you darn hell. We can ask questions after we get some distance between us and them road agents. So there's a killer. Come on, Kimo Sabi. We don't have much time. Let's one of throw this box down first. Come here. Get over it. Get away. Get over it, boys. Let's get out of here, Toto. Steady, Silver. Easy. We take box. No, I want to leave it there. Come on, Silver. Get him up. How? And shoot, driver. I'll get him. Come on, Sylvie. Oh, oh, oh. Easy, fellow. I've got you. This side. Into the brush quickly. We'll hide him there. Ah. Come on, boys. Come back here. Let him take them. Oh, Silvio. Oh, 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 lift him down, Toto. Be careful. Uh-uh. Hey. Oh, he got him now. Set him, big fellow. Get away. Is he hurt bad? No, I don't think so. See what you can do for him, Toto. The guard and I will take a look at the gang. Huh? You do it. You see, now. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Grab that box and let's get the hat on. Let me fix bandage, then you feel better. Thanks, Ingen. You're doing all right. All right, let's go. Well, they're leaving. How is he, Tullo? He fixed me up fine. We'll get the stage and your partner can drive you back to town. What about you? Tullo and I are going after Salter. It's about time he was brought to justice. The outlaw gang rode into a nearby wood where they scattered in all directions. Later, they reunited to move single file down a stream. Presently, they reached their destination, a cave partially concealed by the trees growing at the water's edge. Oh, 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 Stay Stay outside on guard, Frank. I sure would like to see what's inside that box. Don't worry, you'll get your share. Now get out there. All right, I just told you. I'll do the thinking around here. Bring that box over here, Blackie. There she is. Now, give me a knife. I'll open her up. Find out whether that tip we got was worth it. Those zombies who tried to get it ahead of her sure got away in a hurry. <laughs> Lucky they did. They wouldn't have left there alive. Yeah. Hey, what's all that? I don't know. Looks like the gold was packed in cans. Here, I'll take one out. What's that label say? Oysters. oysters. Let me pull out the rest of them cans. More oysters. Blackie, you got the wrong box. Buck, look at the label that was on it. Let me see it. Yeah. It's addressed to the Pine Knob Bank. Boys, we've been took in. But how? Why should anybody be sending oysters to a bank? Only one place to find out. That's at the stage office. Somebody switched boxes on us, they're going to wish they didn't. Get your horses, boys. Uh, what are we going to do with these oysters? No point in just leaving them here, is there? That's right. Let's eat them. Sure, that's the idea. They'll be prime. Well, I guess a little delay won't matter. Dig in, boys. By the time the Lone Ranger and Tonto had taken care of the driver's wound and made him comfortable in the stage, 15 minutes had gone by. As soon as the stage was on its way, they set out to follow the trail of the bandits. Why we follow, gang? We fight them? No, Tonto. We're not taking on 15 men at one time. If we can find their hideout, we'll go for the sheriff. Tracks go into wood there. And we'll have to move cautiously. The keen eyes of the masked man and his Indian companion unraveled the maze of tracks the outlaws had planted and finally reached the street. Holding their horses to a snail's pace, they went downstream, searching every foot of bank for a sign that the bandits had turned off. I'm not the extreme yet. They will go farther downstream. I'm not far away. Get him up, Mr. Silver. Mr. Silver. No, 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 no. These trees will give us protection. Ah. Shotgun from cave. You think that hideout? It's possible, Toto. Easy, steady, big fellow. Come on, we're going to see. Uh, uh, we not go for share? No, not yet. I don't think the gang is in the cave. That lookout wouldn't have fired unless he was nervous and alone. We'll find out. The Lone Ranger and Tonto left their horses and moved noiselessly through the underbrush. They made their way close to the cave. They could see one man standing in the bushes at the cave entrance, swinging his rifle nervously from side to side. The masked man moved forward cautiously. Drop that rifle. Huh? You're covered. Mask me. Drop it. I won't argue with you. That's better. Where are the others? They'll be coming back here in a few minutes. You better get out of here fast. I don't scare easily. Where'd they go? You won't find out for me. You're wasting time. I want to know where they went. None of your business. No. Oh, no, wait. Don't hit me. I'll talk. Where did they go? To the stage office at Pine Knob. And they discovered that the labels on the boxes had been switched. Did they eat the oysters? Oh, yeah, but... But how'd you know about that? How long ago did they leave? About an hour. Why? Otto, uh-huh. take this man back to Pine Knob. Turn him over to the sheriff. Oh, me do it. Tell the sheriff about Salter's gang. The money was most likely delivered to the Lazy Bee. And what you do? I'm going to the Lazy Bee. The money was dropped off at the ranch. 
Salter will learn about it at the stage office and come after it. All right, get moving. There isn't much time. Uh, come on, you. Come on. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments. Now to continue our story. Meantime, the stage carrying the guard and driver arrived at the stage office in town. Got a report to the sheriff. The stage was held up. They waiting the driver. Somebody give him a hand. Did they take anything? Get a look at him. Can't wait to talk, men. I'll tell the sheriff about it. They did get a box of gold, though. Hey, guard. Is there a box on there for the lazy bee spread? Yep, there is. A box of voice, as far as I know. I'll get it for you. Good. Here you are, mister. This is your oyster. Hey, don't let it slip. I got it. Thank you. I got to get going on and make my report. Well, it's under they sure are heavy. Maybe they're full of pearls, girl. Uh, don't get indigestion, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we all ought to come out and eat. Yeah, yeah. I got enough to feed out there already. Hey, let me get through to my buckboard, eh? Yeah, there. Yeah, that'll carry all right. Well, adios, fellas. Come on. As Gurney drove out of town... The guard, followed by the stage driver, entered the sheriff's office where Pete Jackson, deputy sheriff, was sitting at a desk. We come to report a holdup. Holdup, huh? They get anything? Yeah, they sure did. They got away with a box of money, that's what. You better have the sheriff get a posse and go after them coyotes. The uh, holdup is back along the trail a few miles near the Big Bend. Fact is, we were held up twice. That's right. First by a masked man and an Indian, then the others come along. The second holdup was pulled by Salter and his gang. Salter and his gang, huh? And they got the box of money. Oh, wait I a minute, get... Deputy. Uh, I recollect now that the mass man was fooling around with the labels on that box and another one we had. Uh, the other one was a box of oysters for the lazy bee spread. Could be them boxes got mixed up. We'll soon find out. As soon as the sheriff gets going, I'll ride out to the lazy bee for a look. While the Lone Ranger raced toward the Lazy Bee Ranch to bring warning of a raid by Buck Salter and his gang, the ranch was preparing for a different sort of occasion. Jack Gurney, the owner, was celebrating the paying off of his mortgage. All the hands were gathered in the ranch house, waiting expectantly for the promised delegates. Well, here she is, boys. A whole box of oysters, just like a promise here. The stage was held up, the driver was hurt, and still they got it to us on time. Didn't even have time to open the box. Yeah, we'll open it for you, boss. That's a good idea. Oh, Tex, you've been ramrod of this outfit for quite a spell. You can have the honor of cracking a rope. Remember that axe there. Careful, Tex. Remember, that isn't kidding one. Take it easy. <laughs> Don't you worry none about me. I want yours to just as much as you. Hey, what's this? Hey, what's yeah. Let me see that, Tex. What is it, boss? What's all those bundles? They look like oysters to me. Hey, somebody's made a mistake, boys. This is bags of gold. Hey, that sounds like the sheriff's deputy. Uh, We're all in here, Pete. Come on in. Wonder what he wants. 
Howdy, Pete. What brings you out here this time of day? Well, I... Well, there it is. He was right. What are you talking about? The money. We thought it might be in the box of stage left here. What's this all about? It's the dirtiest thing you ever heard of. The stage came into town a while ago, and the driver said he'd been held up twice. One right after the other. Twice? We only heard about once. First, it was a masked man and an Indian. But before they could get the money box, Buck Solder and his gang came along, and they had to get... He did stop long enough to bandage up the driver after Solder's men got him. That don't sound much like road agents to me. That's what I thought. Anyway, the driver said he noticed the masked man fooling with the tags on the boxes. He didn't think about it until after he got to town, so I came out to see. That's what he must have done, all right, because this box was addressed to me. You mean to say them thieving coyotes made off without oysters? It looks that way. Why, them low-down, moth-eating rattlesnakes. It's bad enough when they rob a stage... When they stop fooling around with stuff that belongs to us, they're getting downright personal. Are we going to put up with that, boys? No! Let's get him! Come on. That's my way of thinking, too. You better tell Cookie to hold on to that chow, Mr. Gurney. Yeah. And we'll get something to tide us over while me and the boys go after them oysters. Now, wait a minute, boys. The sheriff and a posse are out after him right now. How about you coming with us, Pete? I'd like to, but my job is to ride herd on this cash until the sheriff gets here. Well, you tell the sheriff to sit back and take it easy. We'll bring that gang in ourselves. So maybe dragging the tails a little, but we'll get them. Stealing our oysters. Let's go, boys! Gurney and the deputy sheriff looked ruefully at the heaped table, at each other, and then without a word sat down. <coughs> well, bring on the steaks, Cookie. Oh, yes, There'll be two of us eating anyway. Well, help yourself, Pete. Sure. No sense in letting all this food get cold. Pass the potatoes. Ah, well, your cook sure did himself proud of these vittles today. Uh, uh, yep. <laughs> it's a shame the boys didn't stay for it. But they was all fired sore about the oysters. I don't think it'd have enjoyed the meal anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'd have liked to go after salt of myself. But the sheriff figured the money was more important... So I had to come out here. <laughs> I didn't expect to have all this thrown in, too. Uh, I could go for some more coffee. How about you? Uh, another cup wouldn't hurt none. Yeah. Yeah, there you are. Thanks. Funny thing about that masked man switching the tags on the boxes. I can't figure out why he did that. Well, it might be he didn't want another gang to have what he couldn't take for himself. I'll hoot your funny critters that way. I don't know. Somehow I keep thinking there's more to it than that. Uh, no way of finding out, I suppose. Somebody riding up. It can't be the posse. I only heard one horse. Yeah, I'll see who it is. Are you the owner of the Lazy Bee? That's right. I... Gee, you a mask. Don't reach for that gun or I'll drop you. You can put your gun away. I'm not an outlaw. Who are you? There's no time for explanations now. Did the stage bring you a chest of money instead of oysters? I've all the nerve. You want us to tell you where the money is so you can get your gang and steal it? Now listen to me. Buck Salter found out that he had stolen the wrong box. The money is here. He'll be coming after it. And he'll kill anybody who stands in his way. What's your part in this? I came to warn you. Get your men together to hold them off. I'll go back to town and bring a posse. Ah, <laughs> that's a laugh. A masked hombre coming here to warn us. Gurney, this is a trick to find out how many men you have here. All right. Hand over those guns. You're wasting time. They had a big start on me, so they may be here any minute. You make it sound mighty convincing, mister, but we're not falling for it. If them outlaws are on the way, we'll stand them off, and you'll be in here with us. Now hand them over. Say, Pete, there's somebody sneaking behind the corral. I'll get him. Oh, it's too late. They're here. Inside, quickly. Yeah. One of you get in the kitchen. Hold them off from that side. We can cover the front here. Right. Cookie and I can cover the back. Good. Take that side, Jackson. I'll cover this one. That will show them we mean business. I guess I owe you an apology, mister. You did your best to warn us. Yeah, I think I got one. That's all right. We can hold them off until the lazy bee riders hear the shooting. Can't tell how long that'll be. They rode out an hour ago to look for the oysters. Said they wouldn't be back till they got them. And they're just the four of us. 
Well, we can hold them off until dark. Yeah. If the boys aren't back by then, it'll be curtains for all of us. Buck Salter watched the unequal battle with mounting fury as four men held off 15. Time and again he ordered his men to rush the house, but a deadly, accurate hail of lead kept the outlaws pinned down. The slowly setting sun only added to his anger. Blast them. We gotta get in that house fast. You saw what happened last time we tried to rush him, Buck. We lost two good men. I don't care if we lose ten men. I want that money. Well, what's your rush? It'll be dark soon. Then we can get him without any trouble. You loco. You think Gurney's riders are going to stay away forever? It's our only chance. Oh. What's the matter with you? I don't know. I've had a funny feeling in my stomach. It's been getting worse all the time. Ah, forget it. This is more important. Buck, I... This pain... You're going oh. soft on me, eh? Curly. Curly, you hear me? Well, Buck... Well, forget it. Tex. Hey, Tex. What's the matter with them? The oysters. They must have been bad. You didn't eat any... But all the rest of us are doubled up so we can't hardly move. All right. I'll work it alone. Inside the ranch house, the four men were tense, always alert against further attack. Then Jackson pointed in astonishment. Look, there's Soda coming out into the open. He's walking right toward us. I wonder. It's a trick. I'm not taking any chances. Open up in there. I want to talk to you. Then start talking. We can hear you through the door. I'll go out. You keep me covered. It's too dangerous. His men will cut you down. You listen to him. All right, Salter. Let's hear what you have to say. Who are you? Never mind that. Speak your piece. All right. I'm giving all of you one last chance. Leave right now and you get away with the whole skin. And if we don't... Then we rush the house and not one of you comes out alive. Now take your choice. Salter, I think you're bluffing. I'm coming out to get you. I'm warning you. Come back here. You'll be killed. This is a showdown, Soller. You asked for it. No! no! You got him. No. Where's the rest of the game? Gee, what happened? Soller's wounded and his men are sick. We'll have to get them to a doctor right away. Sheik. Yes. They ate the oysters that were intended for your party. You mean there was something wrong with them? Yes. I tried to get them from the stage because they were spoiled. But Salt and his gang came up before I could get the box off. And you were the one who switched the labels. That was all I had time to do. And these hombres ate the bad oysters. <laughs> yes, and they took effect. I'll go to town. You follow as quickly as you can. Well, I'll wait. <laughs> and to think, my boys are chasing all over the county looking for these hombres when they're right here all stretched out. <laughs> I guess you got to hand it to that masked man for thinking quick. Well, I've heard stories told about the lone ranger that were... By golly, that was the Lone Ranger. you have just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated. 